when um, solving problems using JS, what normally turns out to be the difficulty is not using these relatively simple um, JS operations. And what it really turns out to be a difficulty is thinking through the process, trying to decide how one can solve a problem with the GIS tools, not as much using the GIS tools. So this process of taking a problem and converting it to something that can be solved with GIS tools is what I'll be covering in this video. I, in general, recommend that you do not, when you are going to solve a problem in GIS, do not jump into the software and start doing it, but sit down with a piece of paper or on your computer and then deconstruct your problem until it is something that is doable in GIS. And then first, when you have converted your problem to GIS lingo, and then start doing it. So let's look at an example. Um, um, I would like to find a nice place to live in Copenhagen. That's my problem. To help you, I have um, done it a bit flashy here, so I'll be using PowerPoint. In general, colors are just there to make the th things more easy to read. If something is just in normal text, it's a concept, so nothing that is yet understandable by the GIS. Something that is in bold and italic, that is a data set in the GIS world. Something that is bold with an underscore is a JS operation. And something that is in brackets with a dotted underscore, that's the parameters. So for instance, the distance to using the buffer, or something like that. So those are our basics. So the first thing we have to do is that's a nice place to live. We need to make that a bit more formal. We could say that is an existing address within the municipalities of Copenhagen and Frederiksberg that meets my criteria for niceness. That could be our way of doing it. And I guess that means that we can deconstruct this thing into a what is meet my criteria and then this existing address. So that's our first deconstruction. So an existing address within the municipalities of Copenhagen and Frederiksberg. So basically, if we um, have some uh, addresses, some uh, uh, some addresses, kabam, and then we have the area covered by. Copenhagen and uh, Flexbear, like that. So only those that are within that area, so these that are here, in there, they are the ones that we are interested in. So that's, I guess, relatively easy to express in GIS terms, namely that we can translate that within to a clip by. We know that there is a address data set, and um, we then have to find the area that is covered by municipalities of Copenhagen and Flexbear. And yes, we know that there is a municipality data set. And we can use a extract by expression or filter, as we used until now, to um, to take out where the commune out is in Copenhagen or Flexbear. So this expression here, if we type this into an expression of our filter, then that should give us that area. And then we got this area, and we can use that to clip our addresses with it. And that solves the first part. So that was easy. Now comes the next part is how, what meets my criteria. So what do we mean by meets my criteria? Because then, then that's not really specific enough. So we'll need to formulate that more specific. So I decided for this exercise, I would say that means that we have to find a place that meet that is easy to get the train to hook from. So I'm interested in ease to get the train, and I do not want to live at a noisy place. So what do I mean by easy to get the train from? Well, basically I put up three criteria for that. One being that it is within 1500 meters of the main station. So, um, and that one would be that it is within 200 meters of a bus stop. And where I go to that bus stop, I will ride the bus for not further than 
three kilometers to get to the main station, or I am willing to live in 500 meters of a secondary station and then take the train or metro um, not further than five kilometers to Nurpur station, because here I can take the train to walk. And finally, noisy. Oh, I consider that noisy is if I live within 50 meters of a road that is more than six meters wide. So that's just for this exercise definition. So, okay, let's uh, think about these elements. Um, so basically, we can um, we can say that we have um, some good places. Let's say uh, let's do that as a as a green spot. So uh, let's say we have some green areas. They are the good places, and then we do not want to live in these red areas. When we don't want to live around here, oh, on these areas here, we do not want to live. Okay, but we want do what we. It's okay to live in this green area. So, I guess in GIS terms, that means that we can identify those easy access places, and then we can use a difference operation to subtract those noisy places. So we have introduced a different operation. Now we need to deconstruct these areas with 50 meters of the roads. And I guess that's relatively easy because we know there is a five meter data set, so it's road centers, and that has an attribute called vibrate. And we can use a filter or extract on that to um, get all of those where this is because vibrate is categories, so it's text categories. So I can't do that larger than or less than. So I just have to say that it's going to be in this category. So this is standard SQL, the in operator. So in this category, that category, or that category. And all of those roads are then buffered with a distance of 50 meters. So basically, if I have my um, roads, so I have. Uh, a road network and then some of those roads they are have attributes to say they are wide so these are the road, road like this one and around that I will um, create a 50 meters buffer so I want to want to live in those let's then say okay those good places they are basically um, the union of um, so of each of these criteria set up so basically i could have so um if this was my good uh, place type one i could have a good place type two so these could be good type two and i could have something else that was good of uh, type three so um and the good places is the union of all of these. And then I would difference those nasty places and noisy places. So that get basically gives me the concept of my deconstructing. So I will union all the good places and I'll difference the bad places out of that data set. So let's look at the individual criteria and how we can define them. So criteria one is, well, basically, we need to find the main station and do a buffering of 1500, find the, uh, 1500 meters around that. And uh, the main station can be extracted from the travel planner data set. So uh, we have a, and this is a data set called Starbuster, and that has an attribute name where we can ask for the main station. So basically, this can deconstruct. So we have a um, a main station, uh, and we can then say that our criteria is anything that is um, within this uh, 
so 1500 meters here okay so that's that would be one place but here two is 200 meters from a bus stop that is not more than three kilometers from um, the airport so i guess if you can get uh, some from Hulbane. so i guess there you can start out by um, defining a new area let's say that is up here and that has a uh, of uh, three kilometers and if we're out here fine so we have some bus stops some some bus stop up here outside the area and some bus stop inside this and around those bus stops that are inside this three kilometer we can uh, have a new good area which is these areas here and um, that radio that was those radios of two, 200 meters so i guess that we can find the main station make a buffer around that find all the bus stops within that and do a buffer around them so we reconstruct deconstruct this in or specifically say you can call all of those bus stops that are in the three kilometer uh, buffer we can call them for okay bus stops and then we can do a 200 meter buffer around them um, that three kilometer one we can use, do that by those okay bus stops we can do that by finding the main station we have done that already so we've done that here and um, and then we can make a buffer of three kilometers and the only thing we need to say that is that from this stop is that we can extract bus stops by saying that they own it all stops the type bus so in that way we have now deconstructed criteria two but here three is that we find another location so instead of main station we'll look at an airport so that's an airport that's the main station and around that we will make an even larger buffer so i'll just draw it somewhere out there um which has a uh radius of uh, five kilometers and any station that is within that so any station that is out here or in here for that day matter of sake um around that we will make a new buffer let's make that also a green one so and that is our where our radius is uh, 500 meters so all of these areas here Are my good areas so going back um i'll just cover it on the slide for itself so criteria will be uh, make around my stations my good stations that are within five kilometers i could make a buffer of 500 meters around them so i need to define what is a good station or i could use I could locate an airport station and I could make a buffer on that and then I could clip my train station with that so I just need to define where's an airport and where's a train station and an airport I can do by filtering or extracting on the name an airport from this isoplane data set the travel planner data set and um, train stations I can do by extracting or filtering my same data set of the type station so basically um i have now reconstructed or deconstructed my problem so um we can if we just look in our drawing here so we had all the good places and we had some roads around that we didn't want to live within 50 meters of them so basically what we're going to do is what we said on our first slide we uh go back to our first criteria uh there we'll say all the way back 
to the first slide. Basically, what we want to do is that we wanted to take this one, and we want to do a difference of the good places from the noisy places, and the good places we can construct as a union of all of those uh, places here. Yeah? So we will union all the green ones. And then we will difference the red ones from that. And then we will find all of the addresses. So we will end up with having some addresses. And we will then just clip the address data set with our union of the good different set with our bad places. And then we will clip that on our addresses. And that's basically the process. So, you know, what you should with you from this is that it's really important that when you do jazz analysis start by what you're good at thinking so think about deconstructing the problem into some jazz tools and then from there you can then translate it into what is new for you namely the jazz tools so focus on first deconstructing your problem into something that is doable write it down on a piece of paper board on your screen whatever and then from there translate that start the gis but first start the gis when you have solved the problem not have found the exact things but have worked you through the process because otherwise you really very easily get lost in the gis too so that was that for this